Okay, so everybody have their uh, paper out? So let's say, I, I think I told you a story. I never had to make my own solutions in high school. I never had to make them in college. Even when I first started teaching, I, there was a, a lab I wanted to do and it said I had to make a solution and that, I, I'd never made any solutions. And I, I, I remember the first year I asked the chemistry teacher if they'd make my solutions for me because I, I had never had to make them. But then I, after that I said, how come I can't make, so I, I had to teach myself, I gotta be able to make solutions. So, so real quickly, let's look at this one. What if I told you that you had to do a lab and you needed 800 grams of 20% by mass NaCl? And I think we did this the other day. Let's just review a little bit. Well, the total grams is 800. And how many of the 800 has to be salt? So how do you find 20% of any number? You just do that, don't you? So I need 160 grams of salt. And then the total is 800 grams. And I need 160 of those are salt. So 640. Did we do this on Friday? Okay, so how would you make this? I would pour um, 160 grams of salt in 640 grams of water. I'm done, stir it up. What do you think? Is that pretty easy? I agree. That's why biologists still make some of their solutions that way. Uh, what fancy equipment did they need? A balance. I didn't even have to have a beaker. I could have put in a bowl, could I? That's what made it really simple. Let's do the next one. Sometimes they want to make a solution not by mass, but by volume. Um, I don't have it here, but sometimes you go to the store and you're probably rubbing alcohol. Have you ever seen that? And just say like 70% um, alcohol, rubbing alcohol. What does that mean? 30, and, and that was probably by volume. And it might be by mass, but so 30% is probably water, isn't it? I say look at this now. Here's the same thing. 600, not grams, but milliliters, and 8% of it, 8% has got to be alcohol. So how many grams is that? 48, wasn't it? So I need 48 milliliters of alcohol, and then we take 600 milliliters, subtract 48, that'd be 500 and what, 52? So how would I make this solution? I would measure out in a graduated cylinder, 48 milliliters of alcohol, 552 milliliters of water, put them together and I'm done. Now that's by volume, isn't it? Okay, you okay with those? Now, even though that's nice, and I have a few questions on the test on that, you're not gonna see a huge amount on there because that's not the star. Who's the star of the show? Molarity. Now, can you imagine people making these solutions like this for 100 years, or maybe not 100, but, and then somebody has this wise idea, you know what we need? We need another concentration unit. Oh, no, why? Well, let's just make solutions like this. You know why. Because what if I told you I did an experiment and I used 48 milliliters of 8%, 20% uh, uh, salt, and I mix it with something else and we got a precipitate and how many moles was that how, how do we get into the stoichiometry of it and once the mole concept came in there's no way this was this is very difficult to get in the mole world very difficult so he said you know what we're going to have a new concentration unit that's based on the mole now if you look on your sheet what is the definition of molarity now, molarity is a concentration unit, but how do you calculate it? Say it again. Yes. Moles of solute per liters of, not solvent, but what? I have my pen. My pen stopped working. Let me see if I can get another pen here. Let me see if this one works. Well, anyway, so there's my definition, right? So what if I told you, I want you to make this for me? This is a little more difficult. It's not a huge amount, but a little bit more difficult. But why? Why would chemists want there to be another concentration unit? Why? And does anybody happen to know? And it has to do with 
rearranging this equation. If I make the definition this, multiply both sides times this, and what do you get? Molarity times volume in liters. What does that give you? If molarity is big M, and big M means moles per liter, what's moles per liter times liters? Moles of solute. Oops. And what can you do when you're in the mole world? You can do stoichiometry. You get that? And so, yes, it's a little more difficult, but uh, I'll show you a little bit later. I can get in the mole world just like that. Matter of fact, on the next test, if you remember molarity times volume, if they give you the molarity and they give you the volume, multiply those two and you're in the mole world right there. You get it? All right. So how would you make this solution? Anybody have an idea? I'll give you a clue. Plug these numbers into this equation. Let's see what happens. Or plug it into this equation. It's the same equation. Do we know the molarity? Ah, is that big M? Okay, so what am I going to put here? 2.5 big M. That's not moles. That's molarity. The molarity is 2.5 molar. That's how you're using the word. It's The molarity is 2.5 molar. What kind of a solution is it? It's 2.5 molar solution. And what's the volume in liters? 500. What is it? 500. In liters? How do you change milliliters to liters? What is it? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Everybody know how to do that? What about 100 milliliters? How many liters is 100 milliliters? 0. 0.1. How about 800 milliliters? 0. 0.8. How about 650 milliliters? 0. 0.65. Everybody get that? Okay, now look what happens. This is moles per liter. And this is liters. What's moles per liter times liters? Moles of solute. So what do you get here? Multiply those, what do you get? 1.25. Moles of NaCl. Okay, here we go. Now, guess, remember the shortcuts? Everybody remember shortcuts? I have to make this solution. I need 1.25 moles of NaCl. How are you going to get that? What's a shortcut? If I have moles, how do I get into the gram world? Multiply by molar mass. What's the molar mass of NaCl? 23, 0 plus what? 35.5. Is that right? Isn't chlorine 35.5? Okay, so what's the molar mass of NaCl? Okay, here we go. Put that in a calculator. 1.25 moles of NaCl is how many grams of NaCl? 0.5. I don't have that in my head, so. Dave, do you, do you, you, your eyes mean that I, I'm, I skipped over something too fast. I went too fast or something. This equation told me I need 1.25 moles of NaCl. Well, remember last chapter and the chapter before that? If you had 1.25 moles of NaCl, how do you change moles into grams? Dave, you remember that? How do you change moles into grams? When you're going to go down to the mole world, you divide by molar mass. What if you want to come up out of the mole world? What do you do? Primarily, I couldn't see what you wrote for the molar mass of chloride. Oh, 58.5 grams. Because 23 plus 35.5. So what, what, did, what did you get on that, Lauren? Uh, 73.125. One two five. One Okay, I'll just say one. Okay, so how am I going to make this solution? I am going to get 73.1 grams of uh, NaCl. But what are you going to do with it? This is different. What are you going to do with it? And you know, not only does somebody have to convince the chemist we need a new, we need another concentration unit. You know what they asked how to do? Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. You know, 
you're going to have to buy some kind of expensive glassware that that we're going to have to start making and it's going to have to be very exact and that's why it makes it expensive and there's going to be a line on there a single line on there and, and that's what makes them expensive what do you call this piece of equipment graduated. not graduated volumetric. volumetric flask right oh, oh by the way around the whole world you're all going to have to buy uh, so many liters uh, ones, and this is a 100 milliliter and 250 milliliter and 500, you're gonna have to buy a bunch of volumetric flask. Are you sure this is worth it? Yes. And if you go around the whole world, guess what you'll find in chemist lab? You'll find volumetric flask. So in the biology world, you might not. They still make their solutions percent by mass. They don't even mess with the moles. All right, I will convince you later that it was worth it to do what they did here. So how do I make this? This is interesting to me. I take 73.1, here I ran out of space here. You take 73.1 grams of NaCl, and where do I put it? And I have to put it in what? I have to put it in a 500 milliliter volumetric flask. Okay, but how much water do I put in? And this is going to, you're not going to like this answer. How much water do you put in? What do you think? Sally, what do you think? I'd, I'd say nobody here knows probably. As a matter of fact, I don't know. But I'm going to put it in a 500 milliliter volumetric flask, <clears throat> and I'm going to put it in there until the total volume of the salt and the water comes up the 500 line. And when it comes up to the 500 line, I stop. I never measure the water. I never measure the water. I just put it in there until the whole solution has a total volume of 500 milliliters. That's what makes the volumetric flask different. That's also what, why they have to be exact. They have to be exact. Um, I don't see one on there. Let me see if I can find it on here. This company right here says, this is 100 milliliters plus or minus 0.06% error. Not 1% not error, not one tenth, but six hundredths. They promise you within six hundredths of a percent error, this is exactly 100 milliliters. And that's why they cost money. Painting that line in the exact place where it belongs and testing it, that's why it costs more money. But anyway, that's how they make these. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, do me a favor. Since Carter's not here, can you go down there and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not Carter. Um, um, Sawyer. Sawyer. Sawyer's not here, and I'll pick up his quiz, but there's some handout seats there. If you go ahead and just take one and, and then pass the rest. Um, what we're going to do is let's do some practice problems. Now, this is not a homework assignment. We're going to use this to do some practice problems until we get really good. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give you two minutes to work it out, then I'm going to call on somebody randomly. Then I'll give you two minutes to work the next problem out, and I'll call on somebody randomly, and all you have to do is tell people what you got your answer, okay? And then uh, when we get to some of the hard ones, I might give you a little help. But we're going to try to do these, uh, these first uh, four problems here today. All right, number one. In words and calculations, describe how would you prepare the following? Do you get second row get any of those? Okay. All right, so take two minutes, do whatever calculations you have to do, and then when I call and you just say, here's what I would do if you wanted me to make that solution. Okay? All right, so take about two minutes. Go. If you happen to get done with number A, you can do number B if you want. While you're doing your work, um, I will tell you that my second year chemistry students all make their own solutions. We review this 
And when they're doing labs, uh, if they want a 2.5 molar solution, uh, they need 500 milliliters of it, they make it. And we'll give everybody enough time, but if you happen to be done with A, you can go on to B. If you're not sure what to do with A, just kind of wait and we'll come with the answer. You have a question? No. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And I am recording, so if you want to, uh, listen, I'll take it. <clears throat> yeah, uh, there's a handout sheet, because there's one right back there, mm -hmm. and they're just working on some problems right now. All right, that is two minutes. So let's, hmm, heavy volunteers, uh, volunteer. All right, Matthew, there you go. Matthew, um, in a loud voice, tell somebody how you would make this solution. Oh, uh, just like the numbers? Yeah. Uh, 60 grams of NaCl. And how'd you get that number? Uh, I divided 600 grams by 10%. 60 grams of what? NaCl. Okay, so you're going to add 60 grams of NaCl. And how much water are you going to have? Uh, about 140 grams. How'd you get that? What do you think? Is that pretty easy? You want to do the next one? You're already ready? Yeah. How many people need more time on number two, though? How about one more minute? Let's take one more minute for number two, and then Dave, you can do it, okay? Remember, the first two are the simplest, and the biologists still use it, but it, it can't get you in the mole world. That's why they're easy to make, but it has no link to the mole world. So you'll see how that's why it's not used in chemistry very much at all. Matthew did a good job on it. It's like it's like it was second hand, it's like second nature to you. Said, yeah, that's how I'd make it. I was never asked that question ever. Never in high school, college, never asked me, how would you make this? All right, Dave, you're gonna tell me how to make this one and uh tell me how you got your numbers and what are the numbers and Yes. Uh, so assuming an eight hundred milliliter total of uh, ethyl alcohol presumably water uh, aqueous solution. It is. Uh, that'd be 800 times 20%, so I put that in as 0 0.20, which got me 160 grams of ethyl alcohol. Uh, subtract that from the total of 800, you get the remainder as water, uh, 740 grams of water. Come on, what are you doing? Come on. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted. So 160 grams of alcohol, and then you subtracted that from the total, and that gave you how much? 740. How about 640? Six, there, there we go, yeah. Okay, so 640 milliliters of, of water. So you would mix 160 grams of alcohol with 640 milliliters of water. And again, because it's by volume, I probably use a graduated cylinder and make my measurements, and then I, won't, I don't have to weigh anything. That makes it pretty simple too, doesn't it? All right, let's do the next one. Let's take two minutes and do the next one. I'll give you a little clue. Um, I would start out with uh, the, the equation, molarity times volume in liters gives you moles of solute. So if you could plug in the numbers, I know you're a little bit lost. Um, okay, but 
molarity, the definition is it's a mole, um, moles of solute per liter of solution. I just rearranged it into molarity times volume equals moles. It's the same equation. All right. Are you done? Wow, okay. All right. Let's give everybody another 30 seconds and then you do it, okay? Now, this is going to be a little more involved. Uh, takes a little more calculation, but uh, let's see how she does, how Lauren does. All right, Lauren, what are you going to do here? Okay. Uh, one so that's over here? Yes. So one big M. Now, I will, can I tell you a big mistake people make? Big M will never mean moles. It means moles per liter, but it means one molar. So one molar. And she changed 500 milliliters to 0.5 liters. So that's 0.5 moles of solute. 0.5 moles of solute, right? In this case, what's the solute? NaOH? All right, so now you did a good job on the calculation, but now, Lauren, Lauren, here's the lab. Go make it. What are you going to do? What's step one? Okay, so you have moles of NaOH, and you know you have to get in the gram world to put it on the balance, don't you? And so what do you do? What's the fast way to go to moles to grams? By? Yes. What's the molar mass of NaOH? How do you know that? All right, you're really good. That's true. So what did you get, 20? So you're going to take 20 grams of NaOH, and where are you going to put it? Hmm. You did a good job so far. Where are you going to put it? Yes. What size? Yes. <laughs> now, how much water are you going to add? I don't either, but I do know you're going to add water until where till it goes goes up to what? Till it goes up to 500 milliliters of solution, right? See, the NaOH takes up a little bit of space, doesn't it? So you aren't. It's not going to be completely 500 milliliters of water, but we know that together they combine or or 500 milliliters of water. Very, that's an excellent job. That was that was hard. So you put in fill up to the line with water. Excellent, excellent, okay. All right, we're gonna skip this right now. Oh, no, we have one more, I'm sorry, D. Let's do D. Yeah, let's do D now. Um, everybody need a little more time for that? All right, how about a volunteer? Another volunteer? Do it? Sure. Okay. Um, I get so you put that for molarity, right? Ah, 0.25 liters. And that's 0.375 moles of solute. Okay, so you got 0.375 moles of NaOH. So now what? Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna weigh out 15 grams of NaOH. Where are you gonna put it? Um, what size? How much water are you gonna put in? Yes, man, I am. You guys are only 10th grade. Did you understand this? There's no way I understood this when I was in 10th grade. Even over the college, I, they hadn't taught this to me really. Man, that's really good. I'm impressed. We're gonna skip this one because this molal and that's a minor character. So I'm gonna skip that for right now. Don't worry about it. Wow, I'm impressed. All right, we got time for, I thought we had time for one more, maybe. Yes, okay. This one is mathematical and conceptual. So what I'd like you to do is, if you want to sit with somebody on this one, if you want to sit with somebody and do it together, you can do it, and I can call on both of you if you want, or if you do it by yourself, I'll call on you. 
All right, let's try this one. You're going to do number two, two A, two B. All right, all those. And wow, if we can get if we can get this done, that's great. Calculator's way over there. It'll be okay on this because um, we're really we'll do these we'll do some more problems tomorrow and so we're just going to practice molarity yeah i think i really just need to get paint over i'll get i'll get it uh on the first hand i see here all the equations we're going to use are here and you'll see the molarity equation here and then i rearrange it and it looks like molarity times volume gets moles so same equation <clears throat> so you guys want to do it by yourself huh that's good that's right you don't want you want to talk to your partner Can you, give, um, <clears throat> can you give me a show of hands? How many of you feel like uh, part A, you're over 90% uh, believe you got it right, part A? Okay. Now, if, if only three people raise their hand, is there something I can do to help you feel more confident about part A? You understand the definition of molarity is moles of solute. They did not give you moles. What did they give you? Let me tell you, every every question on the test is going to be kind of like this. Watch. If they give me moles and they give me liters, I divide and I have molarity. I'm done. What else could they do to trick you out? Well, what if they give you grams and liters? Change grams and moles and divide by liters. Well, what if they give you moles and milliliters? I'll use moles, change the milliliters to liters, and divide. And the trickiest of all, what if they give me grams of solute and milliliters of solution? I'll change grams to moles, milliliters to liters, and I'll divide. See, you can't trick me. You can make the problem look different, but I know I have to get moles on top, and I have to get liters of solution on the bottom. That's all. If you can remember that, and you can remember that molarity times volume gives you moles, no problem. All right, who wants to volunteer? Somebody hadn't done one yet. Yes, thank you, Sarah. So, how do you get moles of solute? Um, what did you get for the molar mass? Did you use 35.5 for chlorine? Uh, yeah. You didn't? Okay. No. Did you use 50, uh, 55.8? Just a message to let the seniors know that you will actually be meeting in the forum for advisory today. But if you are on ELC or the new ELC, please stop by the student activity office at the very what, beginning of the What did everybody ask you for molar mass at FECL3? So I, I got 162.3, but... Uh, I use 55.8, I use 35.5 times 3, and I get somewhere around 162, something like that. How do you get 
How much? 0 0.308. What's that? What's the units on that? Yes. Right. Very good. So we have 0 0.308 moles of FeCl3. And what's my volume of, what's my liters of solution? Ooh. So what's 0 0.308 divided by 0 0.5? Say the same. Yes. And what's the units? Moles per liter, which is also known as what? Molarity. So big M means moles per liter. You get that? So now let's get into the conceptual part. Let's see who's thinker. Let's see who the thinkers are, not the stinkers. Let's think who the thinkers are. Today. How about that? Just kidding. Ready? First of all, what is the concentration of the FeCl3 uh, solution? If we were to have a quiz on Wednesday, and we are, I might ask this question. What is the concentration of the FeCl3 solution? And Sarah is going to say, the concentration of the FeCl3 uh, solution is what? Yes. And what's the units? Big M, molar. 0.616 molar. You are correct. Now, here's a hard question. Mm. What is the molarity of iron 3 ions? What is the concentration? Ooh. And we only have about two minutes. Anybody? Sally, what do you think? What's the concentration of iron three ions. You what? That's not true. Hey, you got her to smile at least. You want to guess? Okay, so does anybody, raise your hand if you have an idea. It might be right. Okay, let's take a look at this, right? Now, this is where the conceptual part of the chapter comes into play. And thanks for being, if, if that's true, and uh, you know what? Nobody else raised their hand, Sally, so I think it's probably true. You, you probably, in this case, you didn't have no idea. That's right. All right, watch now. Watch now, be careful. For, look at FECF. For every one of those, how many of these do you get? One. one. So if the concentration of FECL3 is 0.616 molar, then what's the concentration of Fe? Just the iron Fe. What? You're right. 0.616 molar. Now, ready? What's the concentration of chloride ions? What? How'd you get that number? Yes. Excellent. Tell everybody how I did it again. Yes. Because look. What's, for every one of these, how many chloride ions do you get? Three. So this would be three times 0.616. What's that number again? 1.65? Oh, 1.85. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's what I said. And what unit goes after that? Big M, okay? All right, next one. Ooh, this is a hard one. This is the hardest one. We're going to be done. So as soon as somebody answers this, you can leave. Raise your hand if you think you know. Yes? You can't add the concentrations. That's a good guess, though. What is it? Uh, no. Good, good guess, though. Here, watch now. For every one of these, how many ions do you get? How many? How many? How many? We'll try it again. For every one of these, how many ions do you get? What? Yes. Isn't that right? So if the molarity of, of FeCl3 is this, then what's the molarity of total ions? 
four times point six one six. Is that right? Um, two point is it about two point four six something like that? Ooh, that is a good lesson. What do you think? If you can do that, 